Okay, thank you so much, TJ. The November 5th, 2020 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, this meeting is being held virtually under the Open Meeting Act. Uh, Board of Commissioners is noted in our work session on Monday. Uh, Governor Kemp's emergency orders have been extended to December 9th. Therefore, we will continue to monitor, monitor this vital situation and we will adhere to all precautionary measures uh, to reduce the uh, community spread of this unpredictable vi uh, virus. Board of Commissioners, please allow me to start with roll call. Uh, please acknowledge your presence. District 1 Commissioner Henry, Henry Mitchell III. Present. Vice Chairman, District 2, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. Present. District 4, Commissioner Ann jones Guider. Present. And Chairman Ramona Jackson-Jones, present. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Uh, this morning, we are pleased to have with us our Communications Director, uh, Rick Martin, here to lead us in our invocation. And after the invocation, Board of Commissioners, I ask if you could join me in reciting the Pledge to the Flag in unison. Uh, Rick, with no further ado, you have the floor. Rick Martin. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Chairman Good morning. Jones, Board of Commissioners, and staff. Uh, if you bow your heads, pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer this morning as a public servant seeking your protection from stress over our community. Douglas County is part of a nation waiting. The future of our country's leadership is uncertain, but what we know that is certain is that you are in control. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. When and if we feel anxiety or stress, we have the free will to lean on you. We thank you for that, and we pray for continued calm and the ability to trust in you. In sports, we often hear coaches tell their players to trust the process. We pray, Heavenly Father, for us to trust you and trust the future will be bright. Thank you for providing safety and security over our poll workers and first responders during the election. It is clear as a nation we are divided, but it is also clear that we are one nation under God, and we know you keep your promises. I pray for continued health of our citizens, our elected leaders, and our board of commissioners, and pray for your guidance in their legislative decisions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Director Martin, for being here with us this morning to lead us in our invocation. Our Board of Commissioners, could you please join me in the pledge, uh, reciting the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. And again, thank you so much, Communications Director Rick Martin, for leading us in such a powerful uh, invocation this morning. And I hope that the, your message resonate not only starting with the Board of Commissioners, starting with our staff, our directors, uh, and reach abroad into our citizens, into the state of Georgia and these United States and beyond the borders. Uh, globally. So thank you so much. And that, that, that was a very touching prayer. Uh, clerk, this morning, do we have public comment? Yes, ma'am. We had one citizen to sign up, Ms. Sharon Bachtel. Okay. Ms. Bachtel, are you on the line? Hello? Yes. You can go ahead and just restate your name for me, please, and then you can go ahead and start. Okay. Uh, this is Sharon Bachtel, uh, 6331 South Skyline Drive, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the deputy uh, coroners. The commission raised my taxes 27%. This commission said there was a freeze on hiring and training. This commission has no money. This commission has enabled the coroner to waste our tax dollars by not doing her job. The Georgia law states that a deputy coroner acts only when the coroner is unavailable. 
Our deputy coroner does most of the investigations. Allowing the coroner to have two deputy coroners and four or five on-call deputy coroners enables her to shirk her duties. This commission says they want change. The change needs to be to cut back on needless hiring and spending. The monthly death investigations have averaged a little over 30 per month in the, last, in the past two years. They have not increased enough to warrant four more deputies. If she has, been, has enough money in her budget for these extra de deputies, then her budget is too high and needs to be cut. Did all other budgets get cut? The money from her budget should be spent on keeping firemen from being furloughed. If we have to do without firemen, then we should have to do without deputy coroners. If deputy coroners receive county tax dollars as pay, they are county employees. They represent our county. You set a freeze on hiring and training of county employees. Did you mean what you said? Please don't approve the deputies. Make the coroner do her job. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bachtel. Um, Chairman, we didn't have anyone else sign up. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mitch, uh, Ms. Bachtel, for your contribution to county government. And we appreciate your comment and the, your, this matter will be taken under advisement. All right, Board of Commissioners, next you have, we have the approval of the minutes. You have the minutes of the commission meeting minutes of October 20th, 2020, the work session minutes of October 19, 2020, and the executive session minutes of October 19, 2020, plus the constitutional officers and elected officials minute meetings on October 23rd, 2020. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Okay, being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. Board of Commissioners, we have a proclamation this morning, tab number five, proclaiming November 9th, 2020 live like Lisa James Long Cancer Awareness Day in Douglas County. Do we have Jessica Frazier on the line this morning? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, Jessica, I believe you will be presenting this uh, proclamation. If you could, you may, you have the floor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Live Like Lisa James Lung Cancer Awareness Day. Whereas Lisa James' story is one of overcoming adversity and choosing to live a beautiful life while dealing with stage four lung cancer. And whereas it's an inspirational story, not about her dying, but living her best life, spreading positivity, creating beautiful memories, and educating others about lung cancer. And whereas lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer, death, and the second most common cancer among both men and women in the United States, and whereas November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, we want to acknowledge a frontline warrior in her efforts to spread lung cancer awareness to this community. And whereas Lisa fervently planned and hosted the Live Like Lisa James Lung Cancer Awareness Walkathon on November the 9th, 2019, and donated the proceeds to the lung can American Lung Cancer Association, Lisa James declared 2020 and future walks will be bigger and better. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Douglas County, let's read that part, commissioners, that we want to honor Lisa James as a life well lived by declaring November the 9th, 2020, Live Like Lisa James Lung Cancer Awareness Day in Douglas County. Madam Chair, you're muted. You're still muted, Madam Chair. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good. Okay, thank you. I apologize. Thank you so much, uh, Jessica, 
Frazier for reading the proclamation this morning. Certainly, the Board of Commissioners uh, respect uh, the Live Like Lisa James Lung Cancer Awareness Day, and that's very important and appreciate all the great things that she has done in the community to lead the charge on the awareness about lung cancer, which is very prevalent uh, uh, in both men and women. Uh, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I'll be brief. Um, and I appreciate this proclamation. It was um, eight years ago in 2012. I had just won my second election when I lost my father to lung cancer. Uh, but I was not aware of it. It just, it, it, it wasn't on the radar screen. And, and going through that process and how he lived his life. And I, I appreciate the sentiments that were shared um, as he went through three rounds and, and, and he extended his life over a period of time. But awareness is so important. So to your point, um, um, getting ahead of it, um, identifying, detecting, um, curbing our, our behavior in such a way that, that it, it's all about awareness. So I, I thank you, Madam Chair, for one, you um, bringing, allowing this to be brought forward. And for our guests, um, thank you, Madam. Um, I, I get it um, and I stand with you. And, um, and I so respect you. Um, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor when I call you. You have something, Commissioner Guy, I mean, Commissioner Carthen. I see your face, Commissioner Carthen. Yes. You have yes. the floor. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I think this one is, is really personal for those who knew, um, who knew Lisa, uh, her personality, her fervent smile. Um, when, when I met her at Blue Rose um, year before last, when I was running um, to become commissioner and she shared with me her story, you couldn't help but understand um, that she was a fighter and um, a community servant even while she was battling. And so when this uh, came up to give her a proclamation, it was like a no brainer. Uh, I hope everyone, if you don't know um, Lisa James' story, find out about it. I'm, I'm pretty sure Jessica Frazier would be able to share with you, um, but but she was truly a warrior and someone that I only knew briefly, but I can tell you to live like Lisa means you are truly living. So, um, and we know that lung cancer is the second uh, most common cancer among black men and women, uh, right behind breast cancer for women, which we know is very personal. Um, and we just uh, acknowledged it from October going into this lung cancer. Please get tested, know the signs and um, and help those who, you know, may be battling it, including those who are taking care of those who may be battling lung cancer. Uh, again, thank you, Jessica, for bringing this to our attention uh, and may the live like Lisa James um, be a testament for all of us to live life fully. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Guider. Yes, I would just like to add, um, you know, we lost a daughter this year to cancer. And just recently I lost my best friend to brain cancer. But if you, if anybody's out there and they, things don't feel right, please be tested. Um, sometimes it can, if it you catch it early, it can be treatable, but uh, sometimes if you just delay going to the doctor and with the pandemic, I'm afraid a lot of people did that. But uh, just if you feel something's wrong, it's not normal for you, please be tested. Go see a doctor. Thank you. All right, thank you so thank much. You. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, and thank I'll you. be brief. And, and mm -hmm. just to my colleagues, it's just it's so nice to know that we all are not only concern and and understanding that this disease is one of those diseases that you know that touched my family and touched my mom and that was her going home moment but at the end of the day um lisa if you knew lisa if you were around lisa at any time you you knew you were around lisa because she was just that kind of a person and for us to honor and do this, it, 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 it puts me in mind of just something great, and that is Lisa. And to acknowledge those who have dealt with 
and dealing with or have dealt with it through family members, lung cancer, that deadly disease is it's ugly. I've had to experience it firsthand with many family members to include my mom. So I just want to say thank you and, and to those of you, uh, Jessica, who are wanting to acknowledge her and represent her. I think this is just a noble, noble thing to do. So congratulations. And Lisa will be definitely missed as to the many others who have lost their lives to lung cancer. So I yield and thank you again. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second when I call you district. Yes, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes, ma'am. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote in the motion carries. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. We're going to move on to tab number six, which is a public hearing approval of an off-premise beer, wine, alcohol license for Fresh Food Mart license uh, jo Joanna Miles at 10685 Veterans Memorial Highway, Lithia Springs, Georgia, 30122. Uh, this public hearing it will be led by our own Ron Roberts, the manager of PNZ. Ron Roberts, I see you. Uh, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair and uh, all the commissioners and everyone else in Douglas County today. I have Joanna Miles should be on the line. Miss Miles, are you there? Uh, yes, sir, I am. Madam Chair, we've received an application for um, for an alcohol license from Joanna Miles at the location that you specified 10685 veterans and we will need a public hearing today to um, to approve that. Um, Ms. Miles, do you want to say anything or before we get started? Well, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out to, uh, to review uh, my request and I've been working very diligently with the ladies in the office. They have been great uh, in helping me um, complete everything and uh, with everything that has happened and, and being a mother and and seeing all this stuff it's very important that us need to try to do something outside the box so that we can be stronger and to be more flexible in my children's lives thank you for that miss miles we um madam chair it should be a completed packet uh, as we discussed in the work session the mrs miles has completed the rash certification all the requirements the background checks everything has been done and at this time we could just open uh, the public hearing to see if there is anyone in opposition to the application. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, um, Manager Roberts. Um, Board of Commissioners, I will open this pu public hearing. This public hearing is now open for our citizens to weigh in. Do we have anyone here that want to speak for um, in on behalf of this um, public hearing or this request? We have, okay. Do we have anyone here to speak against this request? The approval of the off-premise beer, wine, alcohol license for Fresh Food Mart. Okay, hearing none, this public hearing is now closed. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ron Roberts. Board of Commissioners, do we have approval? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Board of Commissioners, do we have an approval? The off-premise beer and wine, alcohol license for the Fresh Food Mart license for Joanna Marks, uh, Miles at 10685 Veterans Memorial Highway in Lithia Springs, 30122. Yes, so moved. Okay, we have a second. Second, okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, um, Manager Roberts, um, can you bring the applicant back on? Uh, I just, um, just for the record, since we you know we did talk about in the work session, um, um, tell us a little bit more about the operation. I get this is about the license, but um, um, fresh food, Mark. Um, I know on Veterans Memorial, what is it and um, what do you offer? And you know, so you got a 30 second infomercial basically, but tell us a little bit more about it and, and, and give us context, please. Thank you. Ms. Miles, would you like to provide that to the Commissioner Robinson? What your what your detailed plans are for uh, at the location? Ms.
Ms. Miles, are you there? I think we lost her. Ron, I think we lost her. Well, um, in that case, then I can, yeah, I could share the, the the screen for the for the application. Um, it seems uh, pretty straightforward to me that she was uh, in, the intent here is to sell beer and, and beer and wine at the location, along with looks like in her application. You're a little slow, but uh, hey, is it a store or restaurant? I mean, what what is? You no, know, it's a store. Okay, it's a store, Bye. sir. Ron, yes, ma'am. She's back. Yeah. This is Tammy. Um, hey, Tammy. Tammy Carter from Occupational Tax. It's a retail sure. convenience store. It just doesn't have. It's over um, next to the Family Dollar was on what Veterans Memorial, and it's just like a convenience store, just like the ones. Except it does not sell gas, gasoline. Does not have pumps. It's just a retail convenience store. Okay. How many square feet, roughly? I'm not sure. All right, all right. Okay. I'm just Isn't it this same business that has was like the uh, Family Dollar? Yep. So it was um, big enough to house a, a Family Dollar. So it, it converted it. Okay, I got it. All right, I yield the floor, I'm sure. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Board Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second. Madam, Madam Chair. Oh. Uh, one, yeah, yeah. So, so Ron, I, I get that we can't get her back on, but I think probably the the board has a couple other questions for her about her operation and you know what what her plan is in dealing with those that may be underage and and that kind of stuff. So, is there any way? And and Ken, you may have to help us out with this that we can pause this to at least get her back on the line and you know have some Q and A. I mean. Sure. I, I just, I just don't want to. Um, I don't know. Sure. Yes, yes, Commissioner. She was a, she was a call in because we couldn't get I, her I on saw the that. team. I saw that. I saw that. And she can call back in. That's okay. But I just, I don't think yeah. we want to pass. Not, you know, not given the true Q and A that I think this board would want to know some answers to their questions versus bypassing it because it's just a, you know, a store that's selling spirits. So. Commissioner, uh, okay. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Uh, one suggestion is, one, you, you obviously don't have to approve or you can table. You might want to consider moving the item down. You've already had the public hearing. Correct. In case she calls back in today, if y'all want to try to deal with it later and then table it, what, whatever y'all's preference is. And, Ron, and, and that's, you see anything wrong with that? Yeah, and that's what I'm going to No, sir, I did not. And that's what I was going to say, uh, Ken, at least. I'm glad you typed in, but my my thoughts would be to move this item down, give Ron enough time to try to reach back out to her to get her back on the line, and that way she can kind of go through any Q&A that this board may have, and then, you know, bring it back up and, and get it done. So, as opposed to just moving on with the motion in the second and, and you know, it, it pass or fail, you know, so. Right. Okay. Point of order. Let me, let me get with the... Hold on, hold on, Ron. I think, think Vice Chair. Chairman Robbins got to. Right. All right. So we're, we've already a motion in, in a second. So, Mr. Mitchell, you can give a sub motion uh, right. to the table list, and then we can go from there. But we're already in motion. We're in the middle understood. of it. Understood. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, that's what, that's why I want to get the, the, the legal side of it from Ken to say, you know, kind of what that is. But yes, that's that that's what would actually what I would recommend. But Ron, so are you able to, as Ken stated, we've done the public hearing to pull off the um getting getting her back on the line and whenever you can hopefully madam chair wouldn't mind popping her back right in once we kind of get her back depending upon where we are on the agenda hopefully before the uh, today's agenda is over so can you pull that off ron yes sir i'm, I'm texting right now i'm trying to find out what her, what okay. her contact is you, so you take, her, that, her you take care of that okay i got you. you you take care of that and see can you pull it off so what i'll do is make a motion that we uh table this item and can give me the right verbiage table this item until uh, we can get the applicant back on the line and uh continue because we've done the public hearing but we want to mm -hmm. continue the q a with yeah. the, the applicant yeah 
uh, Commissioner uh, Mitchell, I think the proper motion may be to suspend further consideration of this matter until the end of this meeting. If that's approved, it would be held in abeyance. And then at that time, y'all could take it up, move it or table it to another meeting or whatever you like. So the proper motion would be to suspend further consideration of this matter until the end of this meeting. That sounds good to me. And that will be my motion uh, to suspend it until hopefully this meeting until we get the applicant back on the line. So but, second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Okay, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second to temporarily suspend uh, the discussion until the uh, citizen returns. Um, with that being said, we have a motion and a second. Uh, when I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1. Ma Madam Chair, can you just pause for one second? Because I think this is her just popped in, if I'm not mistaken. I don't mean to throw Hello. you another curve. Yes, okay. That's what I thought. Ms. Miles, are you back on? Yes, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Uh, I got disconnected right after. Okay. Um, yeah, hold, hold on. Well, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. So, yeah, so get it to hold on for just a second. So, Ken, can you kind of put us back in order so we won't? Sure. Uh, the, 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 the motion may be moot now if you'd like to withdraw and have your I, second. Yes. Oh, we can I, take I, it up now. I, I'll withdraw my second. I mean, my motion. Uh, my second. Okay, all right. We back in, back in line now, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. So you're in. You're in uh, the questioning or comments by the board right now, Madam Chair. Yeah, we are. Thank you so much, uh, um, legal. That being said, uh, Ron, we have her back on the phone again. Our our citizen. Yes, ma'am. Let me, Miss um, Joanna. Uh, Miss jo Joanna, the board of commissioners had a few questions for you, and I believe uh, was it you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, had a few right. questions for That's you. Right. Okay, Ms. Miles, if you could uh, just uh, hear the questions, paraphrase to you, and then if you could respond accordingly. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Miles, welcome back. Um, no problem um, and, and nothing lost um, in the disconnect. A couple of questions for Thank you. you. Can, can you give us, um, give the Board of Commissioners insight into what your store is, uh, what you're offering, um, and this again, this is a public hearing. So part of it is having um, um, uh, witnesses that are, are observing this as we render this decision. So tell us about your store and what you offer. And I mean, you've basically got a, a 30 second infomercial that you can just we just we need context. I mean, it's one thing to approve a license uh, for beer and wine, but in what context? So can you share with us, please? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Um, well, the store be a DBA's fresh food mart to be a convenience store. Um, and I grew up in the area of being in a nice neighborhood, and we always had that corner store, bodega. You know, um, even now I go back home, and the same people are still there. And I just want to be a part of that in the community to be like that positive light. If you come shopping to get chips or or beer or wine or water, you know, um, or any kind of food and things like that. So it would be food, um, beer and wine, and, of course, uh, we're I'm applying for the lottery as well to do that there at the convenience store. Um, so this is beer and wine. You're just selling um, single package items. You're not pouring, right? This is not a pouring license. This is No, single. this is not a pouring. No, just yeah. have a nice neighborhood convenience store. Um, we can get snacks and chips and you can buy a bottle of wine. It's not for pouring, though. No, and I, and I appreciate that, you know, um, you know, um, you know, in Douglas County, you have certain parts of uh, that you have that needs to be developed, meaning it's just raw land and in certain parts it needs to be redeveloped. And we, we appreciate your investment and your commitment to your to your community, to your area and your space. So um, I welcome um, um, your proposal. And so I just wanted some more insight for the public on what we were offering here. So I'm going to yield the floor um, based on time uh, back, Madam Chair, to my peers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Any questions? Any other Comments or uh, concerns from the Board of Commissioners? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, yes. So, Ms. Miles, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so so with uh, the sale of beer and wine and all that that stuff, what is your your policy and or plan when it comes to you know assuring uh, this board that you you won't uh, end up with uh, selling to an underage individual. So how, what, what's your policy and plan on that to, to, off, to make sure that doesn't happen, basically? 
Absolutely. Um, and I've seen people, unfortunately, you know, failing to do so just to make a, a quick buck or two. And I come from um, doing the things the right way. I come from a Marine family, and you have to always ID everyone. Um, I've had experience working at gas stations before, and I can tell you customers get upset because you're asking them for their ID. And I say, hey, it's law. You know, if I sell something to someone underage, which I wouldn't ever, I'm the one that's going to jail, not them. They're still mm -hmm. living their life, you know. Um, and to make sure that it's bagged before they leave the store, um, not having people opening bottles and stuff like that on the property, make sure they are off the property with closed containers and it's not, it isn't open and adhering to the laws of when to sell and when not to sell, um, alcohol during the weekdays and the weekends. Got it. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, that you, your policy will be your ID, any and everybody. Even though Correct. Com Commissioner Robinson coming in with his gray beard, you'll still make sure that uh, <laughs> you will uh, ID him, correct? Well, yes, because now we're living in a, in a different era where, you know, people or um, people are wearing masks, you know, and right. they're looking as if they're the age and they are not. So it's kind of a stranger time from how when we grew up. But, yes, because people are wearing masks and um, making it seem as if they're of age when they are not. Understood. And, and, and last but not least, so from my understanding, you will not be dealing with gas, correct? Or is that something no. in the future that you, okay, that's, that's not a future. No, I'll not be dealing with that. that, that that's not no, a, not at this location. Got it. And speaking of which, mm -hmm. so do you have multiple locations? Is this one of many or this is just the start of many? Um, this is just the start of many. Mm -hmm. The start of yeah. many, I'm trying to work on another uh, location, but it's a convenience store as well. It isn't gas. Got it. Got it. And, and, and just curious, not that I need an answer, but why not the gas part of it? You don't like, is that a different customer that comes to get gas versus just come to get beer and wine? Um, well, the gas, it's a, it's a lot, you know, to start with the gas. So I'm trying to take baby steps. <laughs> Okay, got it. Um, got it. <laughs> right now, yes. But my goal, Lord's willing, is to, you know, I want to grow, not just um, for myself, but for my children to see in mm -hmm. our community that we can grow and be successful. Got it. Okay. Ms. Miles, thank you. And uh, as Vice Chairman Robin stated, we, we welcome this type of, uh, you know, facility and, and welcome just local economics to Douglas County. So thank you again for choosing us. Oh, thank you. Oh, You're thank welcome. you, guys. You guys are great. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Our Board of Commissioners, we did have a, <laughs> a motion and a second on the floor. Legal counsel, can I proceed? So we have one. Okay, we have um, Yeah, if you've been to debate, you can proceed. If the debate is still going on or comment, yes. fine. Yes. Okay, we have a motion sure. and a second. Commissioner I'm Carson. Sorry. This, this is Lisa. Yeah, um, I was not clear on who made the second, so could I get clarification on that? I made the second, please. Sir. I made you the did? motion. Okay. Sir, made the second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to call your district. Please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman. Yes. We have a five unanimous. Um, vote and the motion carries. We're going to move on to tab number seven, authorization for the chairman to execute an employment agreement with Christy Phillips as, as juvenile court family treatment uh, program clinician. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'm sure. to, uh, yeah, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, so um, to this point, family treatment court, um, obviously, from my from my place, um, I think it's, it's an important priority. Um, you know, we have to make decisions based on priority and, and, and to the point earlier funding. Um, how will this, so if somebody on the line says, so how will this be funded? Um, it is a, a new role, you said new position. So how does that work? Is there any impact to our budget? I don't want you to answer, I'm sure I want somebody who is presenting this to us to get on the line and, and be accountable. Please. Okay. County Administrator, could you please uh, call on your one of your directors, the one that's responsible. I believe it's Jennifer King. Is it Jennifer? Yes, Jennifer King. I'm here. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Um, Can you yes, give, us this... context? give a context. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Sure. This is a um, grant funded, 100% grant funded position um, where we have received funding um, from a federal grant source. Um, so that is that is where it's coming from. It, it's completely grant funded at this time. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's a couple of sources for funding and I, I appreciate taxes or taxes, whether it's federal, state or local. Uh, but this is um, a federal grant, um, as you said, is there a match required? Um, I heard 1%, but th that means there's no match locally, correct? There is a match for this total grant that we have, not not specifically for this position. It, it is a grant that covers a lot of services um, and other things for Family Treatment Court. Okay. So this right. position is, is purely for her, right. for this position. All right, so you've already got a grant. So is this additional money or is this a position within money you've already been awarded? It's within the award. Yeah. Um, you okay. know, there was a person here who then left and we had to to fill that and use this money before we lost the money. I got you. Very good. Which brings me to my last question. So is this an annualized re-up by the federal? Is it a three-year program? Because sometimes appropriations can be over periods of time and sometimes it could be annualized. Can you give that answer to that question, please? Yes, the award is for three years. However, there will be um, we really applying for an extension, especially based on the COVID situation. Um, so we should have, you know, maybe up to four years or so under this grant. Okay. And one more time for the public that's bearing witnesses. So family treatment, what are we treating? Give a Give a little 30 second PSA on what, what do we, what does this fulfill? I get the position, but in the context of what, please? Sure. Um, we work with parents in our juvenile court system who either have had their children removed or may have their children removed based on substance use. So we provide intensive case management. We get them into the correct treatment as soon as possible and monitor those cases to help them either stay reunified or become reunified with their children. Okay, got it. All right, that's long enough for me, Madam Chair. At my time, I'm going to yield the floor back. Thank you, Director King. Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Board of Commissioners. Um, we have I'm a motion in the second. Uh, Commissioner yeah, Mitchell. Commissioner yeah, Mitchell. Just, just for clarity, I may have missed this though, but there is nothing impactful uh, to our budget, meaning we are not matching, you know, 20%, no percent is strictly, uh, has no impact on, on your budget. Uh, no, at this that? point it is not. So, okay, because, you know, with all the, the hiring freeze and everything that's going on with the, this current budget uh, situation, I just didn't want the, the citizens to know that we're not doing something outside of what we had committed to doing when we got to this point of the budget, so. Yes, so, we're good. So, so, okay, all right, I yield back. Okay, all right, we have a motion and a second on the floor, Board of Commissioners. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, uh, Director King, for the clarity this morning. We're going to move on to tab number eight, authorization to approve part-time contracts, which includes one replacement position and three on-call backup support positions with Jessica Fleming, Ryan Byers, Rufus Hundley, and Dean Ricketts as deputy coroners and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion? To approve. So moved. Second. A, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And I'll ask if our coroner is on the line in case there are some questions for the coroner. Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Madam Coroner, for being here this morning. Uh, Commissioner Guy Darcy, you have a question? It's not a question, it's just a statement, um, Madam Chair. Um, I cannot condone partners Godwin's total disregard to continuously follow proper procedures that protects not only the county but the employees from lawsuits they've been driving our county vehicles 
and they've been working since March, some of them have, with no bond. It is required that they be bonded. We didn't even have them on payroll. Uh, she says these um, deputies are needed because Douglas County citizens have suddenly gotten fat and it will require two people to transport uh, them. I knew one of these men, he was not obese. He died of a heart attack, although it was noted it was COVID. And uh, I don't understand why the funeral home did not pick him up rather than him being taken to the cooler. But we've received a $5,000, well, $5,600 done from one of the deputies threatening to sue Douglas County now. <laughs> but I will not enable her with my vote. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Batter. Any other comments from the board? Uh, Gob, uh, Coroner Gob, Gobwin, you are on the line. If you could just explain again, like you did so uh, well on Monday, what your intent and purposes for this uh, position. I know you have one position that's open that you're just refilling. And certainly, as I mentioned last uh, on Monday, that you have three on-call uh, support positions that you're requesting just for on-call purposes, uh, realizing that your budget dollars will not change. You have to operate within those budget dollars that's already been allocated, and I believe that you agree to that. And of course, so if you utilize one or three, you still cannot exceed the dollars. Uh, can you explain that? Can you just elaborate a little much, uh, a little more for us, uh, Coroner, what your plans are? Yes, that's correct. What you what you stated. Um, the um, extra deputies are for backup only. And, and I want to uh, just address Commissioner Guida. You never heard me say how people in Douglas County have gotten fat. That's your perception and that's your statement. But I've never said that people have gotten fat. And in reference to them driving our vehicles, they have been in training with Matt Laverne. They have completed the training class. Um, and in reference to... Mike actually making $90,000. Would you please show me proof of that? Because my records and payroll doesn't have Mike actually making $90,000. I don't, I don't know where you would get your information, but you have been misinformed. Um, and the, uh, the gentleman you said that's, that you know that was fat and it had COVID, if you would read the statement correctly, None of the cases had reason why the decedent was transported. He put COVID on his invoice because it was due to COVID pandemic where he assisted us with the bodies. All of his invoices said COVID, but you chose to choose one person that you know and say he died of a heart attack and not COVID not COVID. He were not saying it was COVID. He put COVID in transport because we didn't have a line item for assisting. What, Madam Chair, they are for backup only for in case someone get hurt, in case someone go on vacation, in case someone is sick. The, the budget will not change one way or the other. The only time the budget change and I go over budget is where I am allowed a budget and we have more deaths than we calculated or that we predicted. That's the only way the budget goes up. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments from the Board of Commissioners? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. You know, I, I, I appreciate, um, again, uh, the coroner's office is part of public safety. Public safety is not just about fire. You have animal control, you have a sheriff. Uh, so in, in the statement of what that service delivery is, when you look at what public safety is across all 159 counties, the coroner is included. So it can't be isolated is that we're going to um, drain it, not support it. It's, it's a core function. 
It's a core function. We have decedents, our, our loved ones, our friends, our family. Like, no, we're going to do what we have to do. And we're going to pay the people who did it. That is a tough job. Right? And I, and I, I hear, like, you're treating it like this is not sanitation. We're going to treat it with respect. We're going to get the people who come along to help us, who really knows what, what that means, do that. It's important. Second point, when it comes to on demand, we're going to, if we're going to give our director of transportation 11 contracts, all these engineering people that are on demand, on standby when we need them, why is this person who's elected at a higher level have less rights, less consideration, less support? Be consistent now. Right? Don't be exclusionary. Right. Don't, don't, don't be convenient. Now, to my peers, I understand we're all going to take our independent position. That's just mine. Right. But it's like, no, it's all about equality of, of just a, its treatment of like, well, I get it. She elected. She got to ride it down on her own. Her boss just pretty much put her back in. Hey, sounds good to me. What do you need? All right, let's work this out and keep it moving. So with that being said, I'm sure I yield the floor. OK. Thank you. Any other comments before I move forward? forward. Yeah, I just got, I just got okay. one question, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Mitchell? Just one, uh, uh, one quick question that, to add. Okay, so the use of these individuals, Renee, is, as you said, as needed. But there are times as needed, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you will have to have two individuals that will be needed based on you know, whom you're picking up and you'll be notified as to that need when that need arises, correct? That's correct. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure. So in that vein, your budget could be affected based on the mere fact of, because you don't know that person whom have been, you know, in whatever kind of situation that you've got to pick up. You only know it when you know it and you'll have to use it on call and if that pulls you out of budget, because me, my position is pick up and be sensitive to that family and, and, and that, that person, as opposed to not to not worry about the cost, but more so worry about, you know, the sensitivity of that per, or that family. We'll deal with the numbers and all that stuff, you know, later. So if you need two individuals because of the situation, whether they're obese or not, then you deal with it. And then we'll deal with what what the needs financially will that we'll incur and we'll have to deal with it at that point in time. So okay. do do me the favor of saying, I'm not saying, but knowing, let's be sensitive to those families that you are providing this type of service for and not overly concern yourself with do I have enough money now? But, but as needed, keep us in the loop as, as soon as possible so it won't be a surprise three months, six months down the road that we've incurred yeah. this type of a call. So if you can do me that favor. Okay. Okay. All righty. I yield back. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Uh, Commissioner Geiger? Yes. I would just like to say I know she has to have uh, deputies. Mm -hmm. I ask that she follow procedures, let payroll know that she's working these people, and also let them be bonded to protect the county and them. She doesn't follow the procedure. And as far as my friend uh, that died of a heart attack, he was in. The, it was investigated. It, we we paid one hundred and seventy five dollars for it to be investigated. It was a heart attack. There's a lot of the billings that's going on that should not be investigated, even at the hospital. Um, a, a call to the uh, doctor that pronounced the death could eliminate some of these billings. But um, uh, she needs to know. She has to follow procedure to protect our county and to protect the employees. If they had had a wreck during this time when they were driving and we weren't, they weren't even bonded 
by the probate judge, then we could have been sued and we would be responsible for them. So follow the procedures. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. I'm not sure I'm certain about eliminating the investigation process. That, that piece is critical, particularly from the, the coroner and also the medical examiner and also our physician and cl clinicians. And certainly as a health, former healthcare provider and still it's, it's almost like being a Marine, always one and you will be one. And uh, certainly I don't want to miss any steps. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier from sunrise to sunset, our citizens will be taken care of. And I don't want to spend the next four years talking about a coroner's position. I think this is uh, really, number one, it's, it distresses our citizens who have loved ones that may have to be picked up. And who knows, any one of us may have to be picked up. And I want it to be done right. Regardless, I need somebody on call in case someone is sick or behind. And that's just how we operate in the healthcare arena. And this position or the coroner who's elected by the people, this is a public safety position. It's public safety. We're not doing any more for this, um, for the coroner than we would do for our sheriff office and also our animal services or animal control department and our citizens certainly are above animals. So I want to make sure that we provide at least the resources. And I understand Commissioner uh, Guider about the process. We will work on the process. We talked about budgetary constraints, but this budget is really not that large. And I just, I know our citizens, we are above this. We don't need to talk about the coroner's budget for the next four years. I know we have more intelligent topics to talk about. We want to make sure that we take care of the citizens of Douglas County. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. And when I call your district, please respond accordingly. We have District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. No. Okay, Chairman, yes. We have a 4-1 uh, uh, vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to the next item. We have our consent agenda. And please note that all the items are subject to final legal review. Tab number nine is authorization to approve a resolution in support of an application to GDOT for the scenic byway of 166. Tab number 10, authorization to approve the GDOT mowing and maintenance agreement for the I-20 landscaping and gateway signage and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to accept the Family Connections Grant Award in the amount of $43,000 for the period of July 1st, 2020 through July 30th, 2021 for Douglas Core to authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and to amend the budget. Tab number 12, authorization to accept the fel Felony Drug Court Grant Award in the amount of $40,809 from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council to provide funding for a part-time case manager, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 13, authorization for the fellow felony drug court to accept a grant award from the Office of Justice Programs in the amount of $499,997 to be utilized to create a specialized opioid track within the current drug court program, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, Authorization to approve a memorandum of understanding between the Douglas Circuit Accountability Courts and Anthony J. Nicolosi and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 15, authorization to approve an agreement amendment by Civic Plus to convert billing for their online registration software and service from a monthly percentage-based billing cycle to an annualized flat fee in the amount of $5,093 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, authorization to approve a Dominion voting system form of service orders for 50 poll pads in the amount of $63,600, which is grant funded and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 17 also is a grant funded item, which is authorization to purchase a mobile voting bus in the, a bus in the amount of $371,000. $553. Tab number 18 is authorization to purchase a ballot extractor with signature uh, ver verification software in the amount of $34,235 monthly with an amount of $765.97 for a term of 48 months and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. This is a grant funded item as well. 
tab number 19, authorization to approve a change order number one in the amount of $8,454.90, which is a de decrease on the contract with Prime Foundation LLC for construction of the Chestnut Law Middle School Sidewalk Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 20, authorization to approve change order number one in the amount of $8,915 a decrease on the contract with the Corbett Group LLC for construction of the Turner Middle School sidewalks project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 21, authorization to approve change order number two in the amount of $19,169.92 on the contract with the Summit Construction and Development LLC for construction of the Baker's Bridge, Sweetwater Church, High Point, Doris Road, intersection improvement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 22, authorization to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Douglasville for reimbursement to the county in the amount of $3,480 in costs to be incurred for signal timing monitoring during the 2020 holiday season in the vicinity of the Arbor Place Mall for intersections under city jurisdiction and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any particular item, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson? And then we, okay. Yep. We'll I ask that we keep our comments brief, three three minutes, and then we'll move on. All Vice right. Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've got a couple people I want to put on. Um, 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 first, I want to have Director Valentin, um, and then behind him, I want to have um, um, Director Pruitt um, dealing with the um, opiate. So, Director Valentin, is he out there? County Administrator is, is Director Valentin. Yes, sir, I'm here. All right. Uh, Miguel, let's talk about the corridor, um, the Conservation 166 Scenic Bypass Place. Give us context and, and just read. Restate what we talked about yesterday, please. Okay, Commissioner, that, that item was uh, presented by Ron Roberts, uh, so I would defer to him for details on that. All right. Ron? Is Ron Roberts still available? There he is. Ron? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Yes, are you, you're asking about the Highway uh, 166 corridor. Yes, we are, we are in the process of, we put the application together and so the resolution is in support of that. You know, the the we've actually had the opportunity to go uh, with uh, Commissioner Carthen and with Commissioner Guider along that corridor. Um, we presented at the work session, as you know, a, 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 a lot of historical uh, buildings and things like that and structures and, and, and locations that are along that corridor. And so the, the the application process is 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 quite robust. We will have to, we are actually in the process of asking permission from GDOT to apply for it. So this first iteration will be us as staff submitting uh, for the scenic byway 166. So that then the, and then GDOT would come out and 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 look at what we have put together and then and then bless the uh, bless us to go forward with the application. Um, the reason for this is is there's a multitude of things. One, um, there's a, a lot of things happening on that corridor. Um, in, in speaking with Commissioner Guider and uh, Commissioner Carthen, there's a lot of people that, that really want the character of that area to be maintained. Um, but there's also an economic, an ancillary economic benefit for for this application. Meaning, if we we are approved. And I don't know why we wouldn't be approved. We have some, it's a beautiful area and there's enough historical significance there that we would warrant that kind of designation, but it would be included on maps, state maps. Um, and, and and it's just kind of getting ahead of what we envision from a planning perspective of what will happen in the, in the next 10 to 20 years is the preserve comes online as these, uh, ag, you know, we get more agricultural type economic uh, businesses in that area than, you know, having that kind of designation gives us a little bit uh, something else that's in a study that's in a plan it's thought about it's um you know so if we had an application in a, uh, for planning and zoning in that corridor you know we we would also have um a corridor analysis that we will have to do as staff um and we'll also have the opportunity 
and this is a lot of work. It is, but it's it's the first step towards getting uh, to um, to an area where we can we really feel like this is a a benefit to the county long term. So we'll, we'll have stakeholder groups. We're gonna we've got a blog that we're gonna start in the next couple of weeks for 166, akin to what we were doing in 78. These are just uh, uh, you know these are just uh, they're, they're not costing the county any money at this point. They're just a, a way from a planning standpoint to secure locations and position Douglas County for some economic opportunities and also some planning grants and things like that in the future. That, that, that's sufficient. And you, you bring up a good point. Um, life goes on. Um, we went through the Great Recession and during that period of time, we took time out to say, okay, well, while it's, it's tight, uh, we did studies. We did a transportation study that allowed us to manifest a regional bus system when it came online. We, we did a housing study. We did an economic development study that allowed us to create the, the Thornton Road, um, obviously, master plan. So, um, um, Ron Roberts, I, I appreciate, right, sometimes it's just to your point, positioning. you got to think ahead. You have to lead, right? But you got to understand the context. Of, when you talk about character errors, which you've heard me say, for what, you know, 10, 12 years now, right? You, you've got to understand your bigger picture. But doesn't it also impact District 2? I mean, where do y'all start at? At the roundabout? Ron, how far does that come down? I know it goes from the west all the way to the east, but where does it start um, on the east no, side? No, it starts on 92. Yeah, it's, uh, there's like we talked about in the work session, there's this, the segment, it's the three miles, comes down yeah. and hits from um, uh, what that uh, Beulah uh, Community Center right there was, was the first area that we stopped at when we went with the commissioner. So it's kind of, it is kind of right there in District 2 and it goes, down to the roundabout and then it heads out west to the county line, Commissioner. All right. So uh, again, along the southern border, you got three commission districts that are impacted. No different than lead road cutting across three commission districts. It's a bigger picture. Um, and it, it warrants that type of commitment um, and thinking and planning. And so I do appreciate you, you guys' just thoughtfulness and stuff that you, uh, again, in the meantime. So thank you, Ron. I got to keep this moving. That's good enough here. Miguel, I can't let you off the hook since you were going to get on the line. So I'm going to shift really quick. Um, Director Valentin, can we touch on Chestnut Law? Just that one alone, um, sidewalks. Talk about that one just one more time. Stop. Yes, uh, it is a, a sidewalk improvement project. Uh, to, to provide sidewalks accessing the school. Uh, the project is uh, pretty far along. It's about 1,000 feet of sidewalk along that corridor and uh, uh, crosswalk. And the intent is to tie in as many of those side streets uh, to, to be able to access uh, safely, more, more safe than they do now for uh, students, pedestrians to be able to get to the school uh, uh, having a corridor to walk on. So when you talk about, thank you, Director Valentin, when you think about the design of a community, when you talk about infrastructure, and again, I, I know this administration inherited the current footprint, but it's like, there's no sidewalks? There's no sensitivity to kids? I mean, didn't they have kids back in the day? Did, did, why didn't y'all have sidewalks that allowed you to move from schools to parks and stuff? Right? Now we're having to retrofit this going backwards as opposed to our design, our UDC and all that will take care of things going forward. But if just to the citizens, I mean, look, look, look at the hand we're having to deal with, right? We're having to spend dollars to fix what wasn't done in the past, right? To just for the safety of our kids today, my kids and y'all kids and your grandkids, right? And that's, that's real dollars. And, and, and while I appreciate the sentiment, though our operating budget may be tight, our capital budget is quite well. That's floss is rolling and we're delivering against that. We do appreciate the citizens who did approve that. Um, and, and so it's one of those like, yeah, but you gotta, you gotta have both. You gotta, but it, it, make sure you're, you're using the source of funding out of the right bucket. Uh, but I do appreciate the fact that, that this is a project that made the list that that's uh, beneficial. Um, you see your tax, you get to experience your tax dollars on a daily basis um, via directly or um, on your roads or specific uh, a sidewalk for children. Uh, to safely passage, you know, get get across the street and all that. So, Miguel, um, I, I think that's all I got to go on that. I, I got to keep this moving. So, sorry, I can't go long, but I just wanted to make that for the marker. Last one, um, um, Director Pruitt, is he out there? Director Pruitt? Yes, sir, I'm here. 
All right, talk to us about the, go ahead. Just briefly recapping the information that we had yesterday. Um, the citizens of Douglas County may not realize that in August of 2020, we were number two in the state of Georgia for the rate of overdose in the state. Now that's emergency room visits. That's not everyone who overdosed. That's everyone that we know about that overdosed. Those are people that walked into the ER. Based on that information, our partnerships with the Office of National Drug Control Policy, uh, we went into a competitive grant cycle with the Bureau of Justice Assistance. We were awarded a $499,000, $997 grant over three years uh, to bring the first opioid intervention court into the state of Georgia. Uh, that model has been piloted under a pretrial system up in New York, but it has not been established nationwide in the model of accountability courts that we have. So in many ways, we are absolutely first in the state of Georgia, but we're going to be a first in the nation in many cases here as we try to address the opioid epidemic in Douglas County. There are still more methamphetamines being used in Douglas County than opioids, but opioids are rising fast. Uh, our opioid epidemic is eating our methamphetamine epidemic alive, and we're trying to be on the front end and to provide as many services as we can uh, to hamper that increase. You know, and you, you brought up a good point. Um, uh, and you mentioned it yesterday that, well, the pandemic does exist, right? We can't act like it's not happening. We, we can stay in our own minds, our own bubbles, our own worlds, but it, it does exist. And it does have impact. Your context was, okay, don't, I know we got the pandemic going on, but this opiate is still rolling. Right. The meth, to your point, just not like, okay, so it, 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 it's in our community. It may not directly impact us, but we think that, okay, well, it's not me. But there's somebody in this county that, that, that this is a big universe. And so there's other people that exist that may um, have this situation and stuff. So I appreciate this grant, uh, which obviously is after the fact you're, you're dealing with, because now it's on the, the, the court side. Um, I, I know the volume. Uh, 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 related to this, and I'll yield the floor after this, Madam Chair, but I need Ken Bernard to weigh in on this, please, county um, um, attorney. Uh, I know this is related that um, aren't we pursuing something regarding opiate? I mean, aren't we being impacted? I mean, what is the Board of Commissioners doing to, there's a bigger picture here. Ken, can you just put a little seasoning on this topic, you know, about what we're doing, please? Yes, sir. We, the, yeah. the Board, as you're aware, for the last several years has been pursuing uh, litigation in the courts of the op opioids and the expenditures caused by the opioid epidemic. Uh, we're in litigation with multiple parties, and those litigations, for the most part, are either being handled now in federal court because they've been removed to multi-district litigation that you read about pretty regularly, and in bankruptcy courts because a number of the providers of opioid have filed bankruptcy for bankruptcy bankruptcy protection. Uh, I would say to this board, I think I can say this publicly, we believe there is movement to get some resolutions. The problem with the resolutions are to some degree deal with one, court approval, two, bankruptcy approval for those that are in bankruptcy, and three, distribution formulas that are all being worked out. Uh, as far as being able to tell the board it's going to get money on a date certain, I can't. My, my best anticipation is that we will be allocated based a lot on what Tim's saying, what's going on in Douglas County historically, we will be allocated some money that will probably occur over a period of time. In other words, I don't think there'll be a lump sum payment. I think there'll be a payment spread out over a period of time because of the number of claimants. Uh, and just for instance, not counting cities, You've got, what, 159 counties in Georgia, not counting the state of Georgia. Everybody, to some degree, is impacted in Georgia by making claims. So then when you add cities, you're talking, you know, maybe 500 or more uh, folks with potential claims. And I think there's a little bit of a nuance between what the state desires in the form of getting the money and maybe sending it back in the form of grants versus what local governments desire 
to be able to control their own destiny of how they deal with the pandemic because the pandemic's not over, as Tim has told y'all. It will require ongoing something, and that's going to uh, cost some level of money. But Tim is exactly right. Uh, Douglas County has been, you know, at the top of the list for a period of time dealing with the opioid epidemic. This board took it early, and I want to say it was two years ago, Commissioner Robinson, but I may be wrong on the exact date. But we've been pursuing it, and we hope to have something. Uh, I do think you're going to see a, see a series of announcements, and I think I should say this for public uh, for public dissemination. Occasionally, you will read a, a story where somebody has settled for you know billions of dollars with an opioid provider, distributor, manufacturer. In many of those cases, those people will never see a dime. Uh, they won't because as soon as that settlement was announced, the next day they went and filed bankruptcy because of the number of claims. So most of these providers are trying to get a comprehensive resolution with everybody that could potentially sue them. So uh, no money's changed hands yet. It is our hope that we will be able to bring money to this board. Uh, but the structure of that is going to be at a very high level dealing with bankruptcy courts, federal courts. Uh, e even our case against a number of them in state court got removed to federal court because of jurisdictional problems with where the defendants were located. But I, I, we're working on it as the bottom line, Commissioner Robinson. We're going to continue to work on it every day to try to bring some money home. Thank you. All right. And so to that point, um, both of you, thank you very much. Tim Pruitt, um, again, we want to acknowledge Judge um, Bo McLean for his leadership um, and have, have, um, in establishing those accountability courts, especially this drug um, uh, drug court. So um, I want to acknowledge him that we appreciate his leadership, appreciate your work for going to get this. And so uh, thank you. Madam Chair, I've taken sufficient time. I yield the floor back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other uh, comments or discussion? Commissioner Guider. Mm-hmm. Commissioner Guider. We we can't hear you. Commissioner Guider, you, you, you need to turn your microphone on. Yes, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Director Kidd online? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Regarding item number 18, <clears throat> if I understood you correctly, the part with the extractor has a signature verification software was an error. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. That uh, part needs to be uh, corrected. The total, the total uh, item should just read for the ballot extractor. The signature verification uh, software is going to be a different company, and I'll present that to the board at a different date. So essentially, this agenda item just needs to be corrected to just the ballot extractor. Okay. Uh, Chairman, I don't know how you correct that. Um, okay. Um, the Lisa. agenda item is incorrect. Okay. Uh, legal counsel, uh, can we, you know, is it okay if I just uh, request our um, clerk to just make the changes right now on the spot or for that particular item? Well, Madam Chair, uh, we got one of two things. We could, uh, we could have a motion to amend the agenda item so that it reads properly, but you're already in the middle of a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. So it, or a motion to maybe pull this one out and vote on it separately, whatever you prefer. If you do that, that would precede the, the main motion. Okay, I guess, that, can I make that motion, I guess? You're sure. making a motion to pull this item out and vote on it separately. Yes, Madam item number Amen. 18 yeah. voted separately because it's uh, written incorrectly on the agenda. I make that motion. Madam, Madam Chair, you need to get a second in order to okay. discuss the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, I'll second. So we can correct it. We, we did make a note of that. We discussed it on Monday and forgot to change it. So, clerk, okay. let's pull it out. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion board? We have a motion and a second. When I call you district, I just want to be able to pull 18 off for a second. Uh, district 1. District 1. Yes. District 2. No. District 3. 
Yes. District four. Yes. Okay. And Chairman, yes, we have a four one um, vote and the motion carries. Okay. So Madam Chair, this item now will be handled after you resolve your consent agenda yes. um, separately. Okay. okay. And if I may continue, Madam Chair, yes. uh, a couple of more items, please. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this is, I'm going to address this to Miguel, please. Director Valentin. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, yes, on item number 21 with the um, summit construction, the change order, uh, yes. and that's over at Baker's Bridge and Sweetwater Church. High point. Uh, yes. What is this for? What is this uh, change order for? The, the change order has two main components. One was mostly um, additional paving removal of existing broken pavement and replacing it before doing the overlay. And the reason is that uh, where the contract, uh, the design was to tie in that pavement needed to be uh, removed and replaced. That's That will take part of this. The other thing is to add sod in lieu of, uh, of uh, grassing uh, and seeding uh, because of the time of the year. We want to be able to stabilize the area so, uh, so there is not as great a potential for soil erosion during the winter time. And will this change order uh, just be half our responsibility and half Paulden County since it is at intersection? Well, that that is uh, an issue that we were, are going to be discussing with them. However, um, as it stands now, it would be uh, entirely the our county's responsibility uh, because the the area in question is within the county. So they have not yet uh, committed to uh, picking up 50% of the cost of that. But we are going to try. We are <laughs> going to try, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then item number 22 about the uh, <clears throat> um, change in the signal timing. When will that be done? It is needed now. <laughs> it's... It will start um, as soon as the contract is uh, uh, approved by all parties. Uh, uh, the the city is uh, going through their process approving this, and once we get all the signatures, then we'll be able to engage the uh, consultant to begin the process of uh, looking at the timing and the monitoring ahead of the holidays. The southbound lane with the two turn lanes, it empties quite quite well. It's uh, coming from the mall. The, uh, it doesn't let very many cars through to go straight. The turn lane empties out. And then on the other side, uh, going toward the mall, uh, on the um, western side of Highway 5, oh, it, it is terrible. <laughs> as, as well as coming northbound uh, toward the interstate. And uh, it has been, it backs all the way up to Chick-fil-A sometimes. <clears throat> That's why we need that turn lane there. And they are building on that lot, Miguel. Yes. Uh, and a lot of pipe and everything. Where do we stand on that turn lane acquisition, right away acquisition? Uh, we're not into the acquisition phase just yet. Uh, they're finalizing the design. Um, they were having a coordination meeting with all the utilities. This would be the second or third such meeting uh, uh, to, to make sure that they can fit all of the utilities across the frontage of that property, or if they have to actually flip some of them to the other side if needed. But that design is moving along, and we anticipate by the end of the year that design will be complete, and then we'll begin the acquisition process early next year. Okay, so they're incorporating the turn lane um, requirement from us in the building of the new building right there on that corner. That is true. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thank you, Madam. I yield back. 
Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other questions, board, or uh, comments regarding the consent agenda? With that being said, we're going to see Jennifer yes. Holman's hand. Yeah, Jennifer Holman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have a question for Milton on the consent agenda number eight, um, 18, the ballot extractor. Is that going to be purchased with a lease agreement? Milton, can you respond, Director Kidd? Can you respond? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, what was the question? Uh, will your extractor be uh, uh, purchased with the lease agreement? That's a question from finance. Is... No, ma'am. Essentially, we have all of the funds to purchase the ballot extractor uh, completely with uh, the grant fund. So we don't have to do the lease agreement. The lease... Uh, mm. The lease agreement is basically for a couple months, but these grants funds have to be uh, expelled by the end of the year. So it would be prudent to purchase it outright. Okay. Okay. That was, we were just wondering, because we saw that it has a monthly amount. What is that monthly amount then for a term of 48 months? They gave options for purchase. Oh, gotcha. Those are for, okay. Just, just okay. an option for purchase, but we would be purchasing it outright for the total amount. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, Milton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you yes. so much. All right, uh, Commissioner Carthen, I see your hand. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, the items that I need to discuss are items 13 and 14, so I think that's uh, Mr. Pruitt. I'm here. Okay, good morning. My questions to you are, can you talk to us a little bit about the uh, almost half a million that we are receiving, what are the terms of that and how will that be used? So the terms are uh, that it will be used over a 36 month period. Okay. Uh, we have slightly lower expenses in year one and increase to year two and increase again to year three to accommodate for growth. Um, there, the majority of those grant funds will be used uh, for personnel and whether that ends up being a full-time case manager position or we break it up into multiple part-time positions uh, is yet to be determined. We're trying to figure out the best way that we can use those grant funds to accomplish the mission. Uh, there will be money for uh, treatment services uh, there is money for medically assisted treatment, and this grant is unique among virtually any other grant the federal government would have received. Uh, we are able to bring a, without too much technical uh, terms here, mm -hmm. a smart, so internet connected, uh, biometrically secured pill dispensary online for the dispensing of naltrexone. Naltrexone is an opioid blocker that is an approved MAT treatment from the federal government for opioid use disorder. Uh, that is one of the innovations that we're bringing to the table. There's no other drug court in the country that's done that. Um, and so as a cornerstone of our one of our grant applications was for that MAT service. Uh, so personnel is the largest line item and then other professional services would be how the county would code most of the other costs. There are some utility costs uh, for stabilization housing uh, so that we can, because some people just simply need to be in a stable and secure environment. So we're going to be working on housing solutions and a lot of, of unique innovations for Douglas County. Okay, so the 36 month um, that this will be applied over, do we get the money over the 36 months or is this one lump sum payment at the beginning? How, how does that work? This is a reimbursement grant. So we will get the money after we submit our expenses. Okay, so we, we do it up front. We submit our expenses and then the um, grant re reimburses us. That's correct. Okay. Uh, did you get a chance to speak with CSB, the Community Services Board, to see how we can maximize, if this is approved by the board, to see how we can maximize those funds? I have reached out to the CSB and I'm waiting for details for what their services might cost. Okay. 
And uh, my other um, question is, is there a match from the county in regards to this? The answer is yes, there is a match. We are absorbing that match in our current budget. We're actually able to use one pot of money, which is a majority of my criminal justice coordinating council accountability court grant money uh, as the match for this federal grant BJA money. So we're using two different funding sources. We will have no additional impact on the county budget. Uh, we will only accept additional funds in. Okay. What is the match for that? 25%. 25%. Okay. So do you anticipate getting the BJA grant again next year? Do you do you anticipate that this will be an ongoing grant for you all? So this is a three-year grant. So mm -hmm. we will have this and, and there won't be a renewal for next year. Um, this would take us out uh, into 2024 uh, for okay. this grant to run. And at that point, we would reassess and determine where we should be uh, utilizing our resources. Should we go after the BJA grant again, or we will continue to look for funding sources from various um, pots that are out there in the federal government and in foundations. Uh, but this was a competitive grant across the country. Uh, so this wasn't something that we were guaranteed. We have applied for federal grants before and not gotten them. Right. So it's a pretty big deal that we got this one. I think that the innovations that we get that we're allowed to use in this grant will be our strongest foothold for any future grant application. Okay. We'll be studying how those interventions have positive or negative effects on this population. And that way it could be reproduced in other jurisdictions or expanded in this jurisdiction. Obviously expanding in this jurisdiction would be where we would stake our flag for future grant applications. Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to make sure that we had all of that out the way. Um, my second sure. question is in regards to uh, item number 14, the authorization to approve a memorandum of understanding. Uh, I don't know if you were on the call earlier, but Commissioner Guider brought up a great point about people using the uh, automobiles in the county. Has this individual that um, you are requesting to use the county vehicle uh, been bonded if necessary and been through the uh, the proper um, training with Matt Laverne? Uh, my understanding is yes. I would actually yield to Matt Laverne on the bonding question. Mr. Nicolosi has been working as a contractor for this county for a number of years. This was a renewal of an existing contract and didn't include any rate increases or any hourly increases. Uh, but he has been through the training with risk reduction services. So I would yield to him on the bonding question. Okay. Uh, it just brings up a good point that, you know, as we look at these contracts, all contracts really should be scrutinized to make sure that everybody is following the protocol and the processes because again it, it is a reflection on the county if people are using county vehicles and doing things for the county we don't want to incur unnecessary risks so um, if you will mr pruitt just make sure that all the i's are dotted and the t's are crossed so um you can Absolutely. you all can be the the the, the poster department for protocol and how we handle uh, contracts when they come up for renewal and those individuals who are using uh, county vehicles and uh, county equipment um, to do the jobs that they need um, to carry out these things. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm good. I, just, I also want to say, though, in regards to the opioid and the meth and um, you know, other other things that the county is doing. It is commendable that we as a county um, and you all as a department um, are taking up these things. They do, in fact, you know, impact the whole community because if we have um, a high rate of people who are addicted to, to substances and we don't do anything about it, it impacts our safety. Um, so um, I thank you for finding those grants, but then we also have to look at how much as a county we can do. So um, it was good to hear 
hear you say that you all will continue to look at grants and continue to look at um, nonprofits and other organizations to help us with that. Because of course, as a county, we can't do everything. Government has limited resources, limited dollars. And uh, we all know that we just went through a military rate increase. We, we would love to help everybody. We love to help the homeless. We, we commend, you know, uh, Judge Bo McClain with what he's doing. But as a government, we only have limited resources. And so it is incumbent upon everybody to look for those dollars wherever they can, not to um, press the, the government to, to give up so much because we only have, you know, a nickel when there is a dollar worth of need. <laughs> I understand. All great okay. questions. And I'll follow up with Mr. Laverne about those. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am Madam Chair. OK, thank you, Commissioner Carthen. All right, thank you so much, uh, um, Director Pruitt. And just to add to what Commissioner Carthen just mentioned, uh, certainly you said that Douglas County would be the first opioid a program in the state of Georgia. Is that my understanding? That is correct. That is, that's that's huge for Douglas County. And also, I believe you said we were one of two counties in the state of Georgia that received this grant, us, and I believe it's Douglas County and DeKalb. Is that what I heard? Yes, we're the two largest award amounts. There were maybe two or three others that were smaller award amounts, but we were the ones that were really at that uh, $500,000 level. Threshold, okay, thank you so much. And appreciate all the hard work you and Judge McLean and the entire judicial system are doing to, to, to address this problem here in Douglas County, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. We have a motion and a second when I call your district, please uh, provide your response regarding our consent agenda today. Uh, district one. Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries and uh, for our, our consent agenda. Next. And we'll move on to our next item, which is tab number 18. I'm going to circle back and pick that up. Wanted to address that as a separate item. And thank you so much, Commissioner Guider, for picking up on the error that was noted on Monday that we we're supposed to address, but that's okay. We're uh, we're humans, so I appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Uh, tab number 18, Board of Commissioners, this is a separate item. Authorization to purchase a ballot extractor in the amount of 34300 and I'm sorry, $34,235 monthly uh, amount of $765.97 for a term a term of 48 months and authorize the chair to sign all Madam the Chair. Mm -hmm. So essentially this uh, agenda item would be just to purchase the ballot extractor for that amount. It wouldn't be a monthly uh, fee and this is completely grant funded. Okay, that's all you want, you don't want, okay, the monthly amount, we don't need the 765. Okay. No ma'am, it would just be for the uh, amount stated and that would be completely grant funded purchased at the time of your agreement. Okay, thank you. Let me let me restate this, Board of Commissioners. We have authorization to purchase a ballot uh, extractor, which is grant funded in the amount of thirty-four thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second in a discussion. We we have a motion. Did I see a hand? Okay, we have a mo Commissioner Robinson. Yes. Yeah, I did. I, I did. Just, just for the record, um, I wasn't against this. My, my decision to vote against this was just we could have did it within the context of the prior motion, as opposed to taking it off and tabling it. But it was just I want to clarify that the public was asking what was I against. So, uh, I yield the floor back, Madam Chair. Okay. We, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of or, or against, please state accordingly. Uh, District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Our next item uh, on the agenda is the this, um, our announcements from our own Communications Director, Rick Martin. Rick, would you please proceed with the announcements for today? Yes, Chairman Jones. Uh, we just have three announcements. Uh, first, uh, we'd like to mention members of the Board of Commissioners will be celebrating uh, during a ribbon cutting ceremony on November 11th, Veterans Day at 8 a.m., the Derelict Park Tennis Courts. Ribbon cutting ceremony will be again 8 a.m. on Wednesday, November 11th, Veterans Day 
uh, celebrating the derelict park tennis courts that was just completed. Um, so wanted to share that. The annual Douglas County Veterans Day Lottery Parade has been canceled for this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Douglas County will continue to honor and celebrate our veterans in the community in the year 2021. Last but not least, registration for the sixth annual Operation Christmas Douglas County is now available on the Douglas County School Systems website, dcssga.org. Again, that is dcssga.org, or you can visit Douglas County Health Department in person to register. If you want to sign your children and teenagers up for free toys for this Christmas, and your children qualify for free or reduced lunch through the school system, you can head over to sign up. There are registration forms in both English and Spanish. That completes the announcements for this commission meeting. I yield back to you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Martin. Board of Commissioners, certainly want to yield to you all to uh, allow you to uh, speak this morning. And before I uh, call on you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, I want to extend congratulations to our Commissioner, uh, District 2, uh, Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson on, on his reelection, and also all the uh, officials that were elected uh, on Tuesday night. So anyway, with that being said, I'll yield to you, Vice Chairman, before I have my, make my closing statements to the citizens of Douglas County. Thank you. And likewise to you, Madam Chair, for being um, um, reelected um, to your second term and, uh, and, and to everybody else, and which obviously is, is a perfect segue to my announcement. Um, you know, going to an election, it, you know, that's a, an evaluative process, right? Anybody who's elected, nobody's exempt. You got to stand before people and you have to be accountable for the past, the current, and where you plan to go. Um, and so to that point, I mean, whether you're a service contract person um, that has an annual contract, an employee, whomever, it is always about that accounting. Um, and so with that being said, my announcement is on um, next, you know, two, two, two Wednesdays on November um, 18th, 2020, I'm going to do my annual, over a decade of doing this, my annual budget um, town hall meeting. I know people have been asking me about, you know, when is your next one? Well, it's going to be on that day. Uh, and it's just going to be me and the citizens. And I, I'm, you know, as I go into this fourth term, and we're going to talk about what the budget um, consideration is being done. What are your priorities in District Two? I'm going to field some questions. Uh, my legislative aide, Ruben Tillman, will help me facilitate that. But this is just something that I look forward to every year, and it's pretty consistent. So, again, to that point, um, again, marking it uh, Wednesday to staff. Mark this Wednesday, October um, 18, 2020. We're going to do it at from 6:30 to 8 o'clock. Um, be consistent. It will be, I guess, Zoom, Facebook, whatever we normally would do and make this broadcasting live. Um, and basically, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming I'm, it's going to be called the state of the district. Uh, with that being shared, said, Madam Chair, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Um, district 3 Commissioner, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And again, congratulations to both um, you and Commissioner Robinson on um, your um, officially being reelected again. Um, um, we have on November 21st, which is a Saturday, this Saturday before Thanksgiving, uh, at the courthouse, Splendors of Africa uh, community um, organization will be giving away free turkeys here at the courthouse. Um, we have also partnered with Cobb Douglas Public Health, where we will be giving COVID testing and flu shots. So for those individuals who have not received your flu um, vaccinations, we will be giving them out. Again, we want to make sure that the community stays safe. We know that there is a growing number of cases within the community here in Douglas County. We just want to keep everybody safe. So as you come out to get your turkey, uh, come out and get tested for COVID. Come out and get your flu shots. Uh, we also have another community um, partnership that will be giving out um, goodie bags. So um, again, that'll be Saturday, November 21st. We're putting out a flyer so the information will come out. I just wanted to give the community a heads up. Thank you to all the community partnerships that we have in Douglas County that come out and help the citizens. Um, you know, this this is a, a, a 
concerted effort to ensure that our citizens know that um, we're here for them even during this pandemic. We just want to keep them safe and we want them to recognize that we have not forgotten about them. So thank you to those who do partner with us. Um, you are highly, highly appreciated. And I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen, for shedding the, the light on what's coming forth. We appreciate that. Uh, turkey time is almost upon us, Thanksgiving. Any other questions or, or any comments yes. from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, first, congratulations to you and um, Vice Chair Robinson on a job well done. Thank you. And to all those many, many uh, citizens who went out and voted and did the right thing and uh, Douglas County showed out in great numbers and I'm just so proud of uh, those citizens of Douglas County. The other part of this that I want to make sure I give kudos to, and e even though I think we we did an excellent job, you know, but we we started off a little rough, but we ended up uh, winning the entire series. But to Milton Kidd, um, job well done with the whole voting process, opening up at the last minute, several other poll locations, and you know, just making this thing just kind of run smoothly. Uh, in the beginning, it was an eight-hour wait. That turns out to be a 20-minute wait down the road. So, uh, Mr. Kidd, I just want to tell you, job well done. Well, you and your staff, you guys did a great job at that that whole early voting, election day, and all the crazy. I know I was on your, I was riding your back for a little while, and <laughs> but no, excellent job. I just wanted you, I want you to publicly know that. This board truly, truly appreciate all that you did and all your hard work, and I didn't want that to go unnoticed. Thank you, sir. All right, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, Commissioner Guy, do you have anything before I close out? Uh, no, ma'am, I just want to con congratulate those that were elected. And uh, Milton, I think you did a uh, outstanding job. Uh, we had a little... Um, hiccup i guess over there at dog river but uh we went we settled it and everything went fine so thank you yes ma'am thank you okay you yield back commissioner yes ma'am okay i didn't know i just want to make sure all right well i'll close out board of commissioners and citizens of, the, of douglas county 2020 has definitely been an emotional roller coaster for all of us we are very stressed exponentially. I'm telling you, I've, I've had an opportunity to chat with citizens throughout this entire county just when I'm out shopping, and everyone is stressed. All the um, the Rolades and the Toms and all the Melanta and all those things that are r relative to keeping your anti uh, acids down in your stomach, so antacids down in your stomach or your digestive system is right now nervous and I'm asking that we going into this holiday season take a moment to just just breathe and to relax and to just remove the stress off our shoulders as we go forward. I'm just not sure if and I know it's not stress is not good for our health. We need to just as my mother say just calm the app atmosphere for just a moment because we've had so much on us. If I look at uh, starting with the pandemic in March and then we, we uh, the civil unrest and then tropical storm Zeta, which I'm so glad that none of our citizens were harmed the other night. We had quite a bit of damage, but I do, uh, I just praise God for allowing us to be safe throughout uh, the, the storm. It was, I had an opportunity to be up and um, um, side by side with our uh, public safety officials to just uh, listen to the storm and all the damage throughout the county. And I'm just so glad and thankful that no citizens were harmed in any way. Uh, I encourage you citizens, please uh, take an opportunity. I released my state of the county uh, a week ago and it certainly was aired, did something a little different, typically uh, speak directly to the citizens in a forum but because of uh, COVID-19, I wasn't able to do that. To do that. But my, my state of the county is airing every night. It starts at 7 p.m. on DCTV 23. I encourage you to, if you would like to listen to some of the things that are coming down the pike and listen to my vision going forward into my next uh, uh, four years, I invite you to do that. Also, my Chapel Hill, Hill uh, News and Views and also Villarica News uh, column this month, which was for the month of 
November contain the entire state of the county. So if you want to take an opportunity to read it, I, I encourage you to do so. As the leader of this county, um, I, I'm out front and I want to let you know that I'm here and I will not leave our side. Uh, I want to also mention that most import importantly, I appreciate you for trusting my leadership at a time such as this. Leaders are chosen by God, and I, I really believe that, and I know it, it's possible. And I'm asking, uh, just as we go forward, we uh, continue to underscore the need for fiscal policy, uh, developing our 2021 through 2025 strategic plan to determine the best approach to enhance the smart growth for our resident residential areas. We also would like to make sure that those areas are very accommodating to uh, millennials and our seniors. We want to make sure that those two populations are able to, number one, we want to leverage the needs and make sure that those two populations can coexist at a time such as this and going forward. Uh, we will continue to make progress in our uh, with our splash projects, which we have quite a few that are in progress now. Uh, and those projects are so exciting. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we have a ribbon cutting coming up at our Deer Lake Park but for our tennis courts. And we have other major projects, as will be noted, if you take the time to just to look at my state of the county, you will see those projects under construction. Uh, we are, uh, we, uh, keep in mind that we, we, our debt burden is very low. Uh, as Commissioner Carthen said so eloquently uh, earlier, we definitely want to make sure that we continue to monitor, out, monitor, monitor, monitor our expenses because of this COVID-19 situation. We are in a situation where it's very volatile and unpredictable. We just don't know how long, much longer the virus will last. It's my understanding we may be moving as far as 2022 with this virus. So it's important that we continue to double down on expenses. Uh, Board of Commissioners, please be advised. I will not be bringing an elaborate list to our budget retreat of items that are needed, uh, certainly the things that are only necessary uh, for budget improvement request. So I, I won't have a horse and pony show this year and no uh, projections, everything will just be flat. So I just wanna prepare you in advance. Most importantly, I just wanna make sure that we have the necessary funding for both salaries and services to continue to provide the services for our citizens of Douglas County. I cannot uh, stress enough uh, that I'm so proud of our 100% on the the 100% on our census. That was very important, and, uh, and I appreciate all our citizens who took the time to participate, and everyone, uh, including the Board of Commissioners, who led the effort uh, for uh, the census, and also for our, our federal government uh, employees, Miss Ingrid Landis Davis, who certainly I want to give a shout out to for her hard work and, and efforts of making sure that the enumeration piece took uh, place here in Douglas County. So I am just so proud of that 100% in Douglas County because 10 years ago we hit 74%. Also before I, uh, I would like to keep going forward to just mention that right now, um, I want to, I cannot stress how, in, how important it is for us to continue to focus on those three W's washing our hands repeatedly throughout the day, watch your social distancing and wearing your mask. Um, that's very important uh, and wearing the mask according to CDC guidelines. Most recently, Douglas County, we had an article in the Douglas County Sentinel that says Douglas County is faring more, better than most, actually the state of Georgia in terms of our positivity rate. And also we are, uh, we are on the upper uh, echelon of performing well at this particular moment. moment. Uh, with this virus, if we step out of line with our disciplinary uh, measures, certainly those numbers can change, but we are doing better now uh, right at this moment, better than uh, Carroll County, Paulden County, and Fulton County. And those are just some of the measures and um, that I just wanted to just put out there. So I want to uh, just continue to con encourage our citizens to do the right thing, which you are. You are very disciplined and it makes me proud when I'm out shopping and looking around and sometimes I'll just ride the county just to see if we are complying and we are. So thank you, thank you. And I know on behalf of, of the Board of Commissioners, we thank you as well. Also so proud that the citizens you, the ones who voted, and if you didn't vote for the TAD, the Tax Allocation District will benefit this county in the future. It, it gives the Board of Commissioners, so we get, gives us that legislative, the power, not the legislative power, but the power to bring on certain projects, and it has no effect on your tax dollars. It's not a tax increase. So uh, thank you so much. That was huge. 
And uh, this county has nothing but great things going forward. Again, uh, I would like to confirm we have uh, some information for you. If you can make a note, citizens, we have 4,270 confirmed cases here in Douglas County. Also, the public health officials are releasing additional information uh, related to these uh, to the data. Uh, we have 419 an antigen positive uh, cases in Douglas County as well. We have had 472 hospitalizations, and sadly, right now, we have 75 deaths. Uh, so about a, two weeks ago, we had 70, about 71, but now we had 75. So I'm asking everyone to please be diligent. Uh, do not take this virus lightly, because if we take it lightly, it will take us. So again, I really appreciate, uh, citizens, everything that you're doing, and Board of Commissioners, thank you for your full support. But we are in this together, and we must remember stress will affect your health, and we need to be healthy as we go forward. This county has to, we need to remain healthy, we need to unify, and we need to stay strong. We are one Douglas, and we are a strong county. We're resilient, and that, that information is very much highlighted in my state of the county. And thank you again, citizens, for your time and your diligence for just doing, uh, just being engaged in Douglas County government. Commissioner Guide, I see you have a comment, and then we'll close out. Yes, ma'am. I want to make a public apology to uh, Coroner Godwin. The, um, the open records that were sent out had duplicates in it, and uh, the amount is more around the sixty to 70000 But I wanted to apologize to her. Uh, it went unnoticed that there was duplicate invoices. And if I, if I make a mistake, I own up to it. <laughs> okay. So I Thank apologize you. to her. Okay. okay. I'm quite sure she may be on the line. We'll pass that information along, Commissioner. Thank All you right. so Thank much. You. All right. If there's nothing else to come before Thank this, you. Vice Chairman Robinson. Did, yes. did you clarify what we're, when our board of commissioner retreat is? Because um, I, I think it, it'll be in between our next meeting. Do you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I will do that. Thank public, you so much. Right? Go ahead. Yes. Clerk, if you could, could you just uh, clarify when our meeting uh, dates, I believe it's the 13th and yep. 14th, but please verify for us. Clerk. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. It's actually Thursday and Friday, November 12th and 13th. 13th. Okay. Uh, we'll begin approximately at 9 o'clock on the 12th and um, through 4 o'clock and the same on Friday. Okay. And this is going to be live or you say we're going to meet? It's going to be virtual or it's going to be in person? This will be virtual. I'm sorry. Yes, it will be virtual. Okay. I, I was actually, clerk, I may uh, make some adjustments and I'll, I'll keep the board of commissioners posted. Uh, we may make some adjustments and uh, see what we can do in terms of social distance and bring uh, the board of commissioners in so we can uh, meet like we've done in the past. But I will chat with you and then I'll get back with the board of commissioners to let me let you know what the plans are because the main thing is to be able to social distance. That's very important. If there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.